All right, now we are into the meat and potatoes of this here engineering notation. And in this video, we're going to be looking at adding and subtracting numbers when they are in this engineering notation. Save us a little bit of time. I've already put us up some examples here. And I've kept the mantissa. I kept the number small so we can just do this in our head. We don't need big, long decimal portion, you know, running out there to illustrate our point. So if we take 3.2, we add 4.5, we'll get 7.6. You notice that on both sides, you can see that the power is 10 to the 6, okay? And then we just bring that 10 to the 6 down into our final answer. If you look at this next example, you see it's 3.8 plus 5.1. We add them together, we get 8.9. You can see now that our power here is 10 to the minus 3 in both sides, and we just bring it down. It's very simple. So what you ought to be seeing now is that these here powers are the same. So here's 3.1 times 10 to the ninth, and in both cases up here, you can see that we have 10 to the ninth. And then as a final example, Using a minus to the 6, you see that our final answer is minus to the 6. So you should be thinking right now that to add these numbers together, that the exponents has to be the same. And if they're not the same, then we're going to have to work on one of them to make it equal to the other one. And we did a little bit of that in a previous uh, video. So in this one, we'll do, we'll do a, you know, a couple of examples here, maybe one or two examples to show that. Okay, I've already got us an example up where the exponents do not equal. And so we're going we're gonna to work on this one here and see what we can come up with. We have one where the power is 10 to the 6. We have the other one is 10 to the 5th. Now we can work on either one. We can make this number here go 10 to the 6, or we can take the 10 to the 6 and we can bring it down to match 10 to the 5th. It doesn't matter, you'll get the same answer. Start off with, let's just, in fact, we're going to do it both ways. That way you'll see it comes out to be the same answer. Let's do this side first. We're going to start off with 10 to the 6. Now I have to come from 10 to the 6 down to 10 to the 5th to match this side here. Remember, before we can add them, our exponents has to be the same. So we're going to make this number going from 1 million down to 10 to the fifth is going to go down to 100,000. So we're making this number here is going to be smaller. Okay. So this is going smaller. That means that our mantis has to go opposite, which means this number has got to go larger. Now I went from 10 to the sixth to 10 to the fifth. That's one place in exponent. So that means I got to move the decimal point one place over. So to make this number larger means I have to make him 61. And now he becomes 10 to the fifth. Okay. Plus now he's already 10 to the fifth. So we we'll just bring him down. We don't need to make any changes. Now you can see that both of the exponents are the same. So now we can add them just like we normally do. So we're going to add our mantises together. I think I'll just put it right over here. And then we'll get three point two it looks like it's going to be 64.2 so our final answer here is 64.2 times 10 to the fifth but as you notice that answer is not in engineering notation in fact i had one professor that if you did not give the answers in engineering notation even though this is technically correct you will get some points knocked off so let's put it in the engineering notation as you can see I want this number, I got to either raise this number up or I got to bring it down, right? So I could go 10 to the 6, so I could go down 10 to the 3rd. Let's take a look at it. If I raise this number 10 to the 6, I'm making it larger, correct? That means I need to make this number smaller. So if I make it smaller, that means it'll be 6.42 times 10 to the 6, okay? Let's look at it the other way. I got 10, I want to make it to, to the third. Now I got to make this number smaller. So I'm going to 10 to the fifth, 10 to the third. That's making the number smaller, which means I need to make this number bigger. 
Now to do that, I've changed this number by two decimal places, which means that decimal there has got to move over two places. So now I'm going to be wound up with 6,420. That's four digits. I can only have three digits as max in my engineering notation, so I know I cannot use 10 to the third power. Therefore, this is the answer. Okay? 6.42 times 10 to the 6. Now let's take a look at it the other way, just to prove our point that we should come out with the same answer as this one right here. So I'm just going to start up here back to the top, 6.1 times 10 to the 6. Going to add 3.2 times 10 to the 5th. Now we're going to make this number larger. We're going to make this here 10 to the 5th. This number is going to be larger, 10 to the 6th to match this 10 to the 6 over here, okay? Now, if I make this number larger, that means this number has to get smaller. So let's go ahead, we'll just go ahead, we'll write this one down as it is. Now, made this number larger. I'm going 10 to the 6, that's 1. From 5 to 6 is 1, so that means I'm gonna move my decimal place one place. I gotta make this number smaller. So that means it's going to be 0 0.32 times 10 to the 6. Now, notice that this here, 0 0.32, is not scientific notation and it's not engineering notation. Don't worry about it. We'll take care of the notation and the final answer. Just move the decimal wherever it needs to go to where it needs to be. Okay? Now, we have 10 to 6. 10 to 6 looks good. Now we can add these two numbers together. So now I have 6.1 plus 0 0.32. And you see I have 6.42 times 10 to the 6. And it is already an engineering notation. And if you can see, you get the same answer. So it does not matter which side you want to work on. You can make the number bigger or smaller on the exponent. That's up to you. Okay, now let's take another example where the exponents don't match. But this time, let's look at it with negative exponents because some people get confused with the negative exponents about what's getting larger and what's getting smaller. We have a negative 5 over here, and we have a negative 3 up here in the exponents, okay? Now, if we take a look at this, we got to see what is, what is 10 to the minus 3. First, we've got to know what is that. And if you remember from the previous video, 10 to the minus 3 is the same thing as 1 over 1,000th. Okay? And 10 to the minus 5 is 100,000. 1, 2, 3. One more zero. Okay? All you have to do is just... Add the number of zeros to whatever the exponent is, and you got it. Now you can see that this here number, one, one hundred thousandth, is smaller than one thousandth. Therefore, we know this number, 10 to the fifth, is smaller than 10 to the minus 3. Okay? Now, you can work on either side. We can take the 10 to the minus 5, we can bring it down to minus 3, or we can take the minus 3, and we can carry it to the minus 5. It doesn't matter. As you see, you'll still get the same answers we've shown in the previous video. Let's take, uh, let's do this side over here. We're going to take 10 to the minus 5. We're going to bring it down to 10 minus 3. So, let's go ahead and we'll just write this side out. So we got 3.5 times 10 to the minus 3 plus... So we're going to take this one, we're going to take this number, minus 5, go down to minus 3. We are making that number, is it smaller or is it larger? What are we going to be doing to this number by going from minus 5 down to minus 3? We're going to be making that number larger. So this number is going larger. And whatever we do up here, on this here power, we do the opposite to the mantissa. So therefore, we're going to make this number smaller. 
Now we're going to be moving the decimal point two places because we're going from minus 5 down to minus 3. That's a difference of 2. So that means this number is going to be 0 0.044 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay? Looks good. My decimal point was originally here. Okay? And I moved it two places to the left to make that number smaller. Okay. So now all we have to do is add our mantissas together. So let's go with 3.5. Okay. And now we got 0 0.044. We add them together. And we get 4, 4, 5, 3. So our answer is 3.5. 4, 4 times 10 and just bring down to minus 3. As you can see, that is already an engineering notation. So that is our final, final answer for that one. Alright, now let me give you an example of where this notation of adding these numbers and subtracting, subtracting them can be pretty, pretty simplified. For example, let's start off with a number like this. We have 3,200,000 and we're going to add it to 4,500,000. And let's just do it the old fashioned way. So we add our numbers together and we see that we have 7,700,000. Okay? Now let's take these numbers here and we're going to convert them directly right into engineering notation. So do we know this number is going to be 3.2 times 10? to the 6. And this number over here is going to be 4.5 times 10 to the 6. Now we add them together. We get 7.7 .7 times 10 to the 6. Those are equal. Now let's take this number in engineering notation. Let's move it out to decimal notation. So we have 7. There's our understood zero uh, decimal point right there. There it is right there. Now it says, hey, move it over six places to the right. So I'm going to start right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Boom. There's our decimal point. That's where it's going to be. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to fill in our zeros. Whoops. Should be a seven there. And then a zero and a zero. And now let's rewrite it. And then mark it off. And now you can look. And you can see that we have 7,700,000, 7,700,000, and you still get the same answer. But you can probably look at this right here. It looks a little bit simpler, you know, just that shorthand way of writing out our numbers here. Okay, now the last thing I want to talk to you about is something that you might run across called E notation. E, by the, you know, being electronic, you're on a computer, uh, you're on your calculator. So you may see another way of this number being expressed. All right. Let's take a normal number here in engineering notation. And I'm going to rewrite it in this new notation, E notation. And it'll be 5.34. Now, the times 10, I'm going to substitute the letter E. And I'm going to put an E in there. And then I'm going to take my exponent and I'm going to just stick it right beside of the E. And that is what you typically what you will see on your calculator. And if you're on the keyboard, on the computer, and you're in a text message, you could also write it like this right here. Another way that you can do it, and this is on the computer, is that you could write it like this. You will say, say, 5.34 times 10. And then if you look above your letter, uh, your number 6, you will see the caret symbol. Okay? And that will look like that. So you would type that and then you come back back and then you put in your exponent. So you could also type it in on a computer like that right there. Now you may be wondering about the calculator. Can you actually enter these numbers in a scientific or engineering notation format? And the answer is yes. However, if you have a cheap calculator, say something like this, then you can only enter it in decimal notation. So you cannot enter it in scientific or engineering notation. 
So let's get rid of him. Now this calculator is a graphing calculator and all of the graphing calculators, and of course they cost more money, but they will allow you to enter a number in decimal, scientific, or engineering notation. Now this calculator, I've set it up so that whatever I type into it, whether it's add, subtract, multiply, divide, if I want to get some, or some other function or something, my answer is going to always come out in engineering notation. So, as an example, I don't know how well this will show up on the, on the camera, but let's say I'm going to type in, oh, I don't know, 1.23. Now, what I'm typing in is showing up right here. Now, I want times 10, but on the calculator, you'll see there's a EE -E symbol. So, I hit that, and if you notice, it comes up with the E the electronic notation I was talking about as I discussed earlier. Now all I need to do is type in my exponent, say 5, and let's say I want to add, and I'm going to add, I don't know, uh, 5.16e, uh, e, and I'm going to do, uh, let's see, what can I put in? Let's put in uh, 7. Now you notice in both cases I typed in 5 for my exponent and then 7 for the other one. And neither one of those is those numbers is in engineering notation. But you remember I said I want my answer in engineering notation. So the calculator is going to automatically do that for me. So I hit enter. And if you look right up in here, here is my answer, which is 51.723 e to the 6th power. And of course you can see that is in engineering notation. So that's going to wrap up this video. So if you're adding and subtracting numbers in engineering notation, what you want to make sure is that the exponent has to be the same. And if it's not, then you want to make one of them equal. And then that uh, will take care of you in getting your final answer. So that's going to wrap this video up. Hope you like it. We'll see you guys in the next one. And we're going to see what's going to, how do you work with numbers, engineering notation numbers, when you want to multiply and divide. And you'll see that there will be some different rules for that. So you guys take care, and we'll see you in the next one.